Saturn's rings. Has anyone actually seen Saturn through a telescope before? Yeah? Do they look more like the top view or the bottom view? Top view. Uh, top view is through a four inch aperture and the bottom view is through an eight inch aperture. And you can see that there's structure in the rings even from a small telescope on Earth. Through a spacecraft, it looks more like that. Thousands of ringlets, lots of gaps, lots of waves in the rings. Now, in the Saturn system, things tend to be named after famous scientists. Some of the moons have mythological names. The rings A, B, and C, not so imaginative. There are other rings as well. There's the F ring up there. This is a complete diagram. The D ring is actually a proper ring. That's um, particles that are deorbiting from the ceiling and falling into Saturn. Imagine what the meteor shells would look like on Saturn's equator. The outer rings are associated with moons. Um, the F ring is made of dust blown off the moons, Prometheus and Pandora. The G ring is associated with the moon Aegean. And the E ring is made of matter that's been blown off with the moon Enceladus, which has active geysers on it. Um, to show you the scale of the rings, I made this drawing in paint, and I'll show you the new station. Um, the rings are, the main ring system, that's the A, B, and C rings, are about as wide as the distance from the Earth to the Moon. But they're only about a kilometre thick, or 0.6 miles, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, but they only look a kilometre thick. It's like saying that this sheet of paper is about two centimetres thick, and in fact it's only a fraction of a millimetre, because the rings have waves and corrugations in them. They're actually only 20 metres thin in some places. So if this paper actually was Saturn rings, anyone care to venture a guess as to how wide a scale model would have to be? No? Side of Manchester. Not quite that big, it would be two kilometres across. So what are the rings made of? Um, we've known since the 19th century that the rings cannot be solved. James Clerk Maxwell of electromagnetism and gases fame proved that um, the rings had to be made of smaller particles, each one an independent moon rock in its own orbit. But how big are those particles? There are many different ways to do it, but my favourite is the one employed by the Voyager spacecraft. You can see these done this again. Uh, that's the program we currently have in orbit around Saturn. If you think about a wave breaking on a beach, it will go around a huge boulder. That will cause it to reflect and diffract and diffract. But a tiny grain of sand won't really interfere with it. So if we beam different sized infrared radiation, visual waves, radio waves off of the rings and see what reflects back, we can get the distribution of the sizes of the grains in them. And most particles range from a fraction of a millimetre to a few tens of centimetres. So grains of dust inside the football, with the largest being about the size of this building. That was what Voyager found. Cassini has found that some of these particles, even though they're individually that big, come together in fluffy aggregates, which we call moonlets, that are a few hundreds of meters across, so about the size of the University of Manchester or Mount Mount Campus. And we can't see those moonlets, but we can see the effects that they have. That's essentially a gravitational tsunami in the rings caused by a little movement near the top. Um, how did the rings form? I would go into detail about this, but I, I'll leave that for questions because I'm a bit pressed for time. But um, a satellite on the closest side to Saturn, it feels a stronger gravitational pull than on the farther side to Saturn. And if it comes closer and closer to Saturn, it will get torn apart if it comes within a distance called the Roche limit. The actual size of the Roche limit depends on the density of the satellite. Um, for a satellite, the same density of the planet, that's the dash line at 2.44 planet radii. And we can see that all the major planetary rings fall within that limit. Now, in the case of Saturn, we're probably be a bit closer because Saturn is the least dense of the planets. Um, it's light enough to float in water if you have a half to big enough. Don't pull a plug and leave a ring. Um, sorry. Um, so Saturn's rings are probably either the debris from the moon that got broken up, or bits of the protoplanetary nebula left over from when Saturn formed. And now we think that the rings are actually quite old. We used to think that they were young, but I'll go into that in the question because I think it's interesting. So what kind of structure is there on the rings? The most obvious thing are the gaps. Some of these are created from within by moons and moonlets. This little moon there is called Daphnis, and a gap called the Kilo gap in the alien. Uh, so how does this gap form? Particles closer in than Daphnis are moving faster in accordance with the laws of orbital mechanics. So they overtake Daphnis. Daphnis' gravitational pull slows them down, which drains their energy and drops them into a lower orbit. At the same time, particles move, particles move further out than Daphnis. Um, 
are moving more slowly, so they lag behind it, and the Daphnis' gravitational force speeds them up and pushes them out. So you can kind of see how that works, filling a gap from within. Moons can also fill the gaps from without. Um, there's the moon Minus, which may look quite familiar. Um, Minus orbits outside the moons. And some of the particles are in what we call a 2 to 1 orbital resonance with Minus. That means that they all go around Saturn exactly twice for every one orbit that Minus makes. So they get a periodic tug from Minus. And that drags them out of position. Uh, to clear a space in the rings, that's the famous Cassini division, which is the big gap between the A and B rings there. And if you look carefully at that person, you can see that it's not entirely empty. There are also stable resonances as well. Um, so there are ringlets in the little gaps as well. Um, so some ringlets are caused by these orbital resonances, carbon gaps in the rings. There are other ringlets as well, density waves. Um, the gravity of the moons and the other ring particles can cause particles to bunch up, like a traffic jam. Some of these waves are circles, some are elliptical, and some are tightly wound spirals. So some of those rings in a picture like that, that look like spirals, but that look like circles, are actually very tightly wound spirals. And the same physics is operating on a much looser and much, much, much larger scale in the spiral arms of galaxies. So Saturn's rings are kind of like a very tightly wound spiral galaxy made of ice particles, which is pretty cool. Uh, there are also corrugation waves. So if a moon's in an orbit inclined to the rings, it can drag some of the particles up and some of the particles down when it passes over and above the ring plane. And the net effect of all these gaps, density waves, and corrugations is to produce that. Uh, one of the most interesting features of Saturn's rings are these things in the B rings. They're spokes of very fine dust. <coughs> all the rings are made of ice, by the way. They're highly reflective. They're like 99% water ice. Um, these particles of dust are probably being levitated above the rings by magnetic fields. And we know that because A, they orbit around Saturn in time with Saturn's magnetic field. And B, if they were orbiting around gravitation, the inner parts would move faster than the outer parts. And you can see from this animation, they don't. They all rotate as a solid body. So there's something interesting there. That was discovered by Carolyn Hooker, by the way, who's the head of imaging in the casino mission. Mm -hmm. um, so I've already mentioned how a moon can clear gaps. Moons can also do the opposite, they can combine rings. If you have a moon in the middle of a gap, it can sweep particles out of the way. If you have two moons on the edge of the ring, they can sweep particles inwards um, by the same mechanism that I described before. So the inner shepherd moon moves faster than the ring particles, gets ahead of them, speeds them up, accelerates them, and throws them into a higher orbit. The outer moon gets behind them, slows them down, drops them, and that squeezes the particles together, confines them into a narrow ring. And this is my favourite ring of Saturn, the F ring. It's made of these moons, Prometheus on the inside and Pandora on the outside. And you can see Prometheus, you can almost see it in action. Prometheus is speeding the F ring particles up and throwing them up into the F ring. You can kind of see it there. So these two moons are making the ring narrow. They're called shepherd moons because they're kind of like two sheepdogs calling a sheep. Um, th this is just good. That's. Um, that's Prometheus on the inside of the F ring, and it's drawing out the streamers. And Prometheus and Pandora just do the most amazing things with the F ring. It's incredibly narrow, but they put kinks and twists. And even if you look carefully at that, you can see that two of the strands are literally braided together. That is just weird. And some of the dynamics involved. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the moon Atlas, which um, should get all the tinfoil hats thinking. <laughs> Looks like a UFO. Um, it orbits within the plane of Saturn's rings, so it's kind of piled on dust and ice from the rings around its equator. Um, this orbits on the outside edge of the A ring, and it's kind of shepherding the particles. It drops them into a lower orbit because it moves outside them, so it kind of keeps, gives the A ring a sharp edge. That's why it's called Atlas, because it holds up the ring like Atlas, it holds up the sky. And I'd like to finish with this picture. Um, there's nothing new here that I haven't told you. You can see the A ring with its sharp edge. The F ring that's overexposed there, that's the G ring. At the bottom, that's the E ring, which is the particles thrown off from the moon Enceladus. And that thing there, that is planet Earth. Um, I show you this picture, not for any scientific reason, but partly for, the, partly for its aesthetics, and partly because of its almost spiritual value of humanity showing us our place in the universe. Physics and beauty go hand in hand. And um, Carl Sagan said that it does no harm to the romance of the sunset in my little bit about it. And in my opinion, he didn't go far enough 
Because in the case of Saturn's rings, it not only does no harm to the beauty of them, it enhances them. And if you know something about the clockwork behind the rings and how they're shaped into all these ringlets and waves and what they're made of and how we know, that only makes them infinitely more beautiful.